sort of magical barrier is preventing me from touching this. Lost and found is empty.
This is the statue of Walter the Clairvoyant. Walter always knew exactly what was going to happen to every man, woman, and child. Who they would marry, when they would die, and how they would spend their mundane lives. So, the villagers came to him, inquired about such things, and left with greater peace of mind. That is, until they began to hear things they did not want to hear. Stories of bloodshed, adultery, and the end of friendships. Failing to realize that such things would have happened regardless of Walter's predictions, the villagers gathered an angry mob late one evening and lynched poor Walter to death. Walter, of course, knew this was going to happen and was therefore prepared. So he braced himself for the inevitable with a smile on his lips. The villagers, on the other hand, spent the rest of their lives shrouded in perpetual confusion. This is the statue of Lucy the Charitable. Lucy was a goddess so generous that she'd give anything she owned to anyone who asked. Food, clothes, widgets, you name it. She soon became known throughout her home village as the mother of the poor. Later on, however, word traveled about her superhuman generosity and soon, people from other villages began to travel to her home and ask for stuff. Of course, she could never say no. Eventually, the poor had taken so much from Lucy that she no longer had anything left to give. Hungry as they were, they began to eat her alive. Yes, even the bones. The poor then realized that without Lucy's generosity, they would have to either learn to fend for themselves or starve to death. Naturally, they starved to death. This is the statue of Albert the Powerful. Albert's superhuman strength was a much sought-after commodity to humans. Whenever something heavy required lifting, a boulder, a tree, a house, even a mountain, Albert would do so without question. One day, a group of villagers decided to ask Albert for a special favor. They were cold, so they wished for him to move the earth closer to the sun. Naturally, Albert obliged. As it turned out, the earth was heavier than anything Albert had lifted before. And this made him immediately collapse of exhaustion and die. Hence, from this day forward, humans had no choice but to live with their physical weaknesses. This is the statue of Beatrice the Attractive. Beatrice was the most beautiful of all the gods and goddesses, and every man and woman on earth reveled in her magnetic charm. To celebrate Beatrice's beauty, a group of villagers built a statue in her honor. For nine years, they slaved away at it using only the finest materials. Finally, it was time for the grand unveiling. As soon as the cover was removed, an unearthly wail sounded from the sky. 
Beatrice, as it turned out, was not pleased with her statue. The villagers had made her nose just a little bit crooked. Sure, it was only a tiny mistake, but it was enough of a mistake for Beatrice to keel over and die of shock. Thus, forcing humans to search for beauty elsewhere for the remainder of eternity. This is the statue of Susan the Melodious. Susan had the sweetest, most beautiful singing voice in existence. It was so beautiful that it made flowers bloom and birds twitter happily. And all the villagers loved it. That is, until a traveling rock and roll band came to the village and instilled in its inhabitants a desire for louder, harsher music. So... They built guitars and drums and made noise with them all the live-long day. Susan, in the meantime, found herself forced to sing louder and louder to compensate for the noise. Until, one day, she lost her voice. When this happened, the flowers stopped blooming and the birds stopped twittering. And without her previous sense of purpose, Susan withered away and died. The villagers, unfortunately, didn't notice because they were too busy banging heads in the mosh pit. Greetings, monk. What exactly are you guarding, monk? This is the Mother Mary Josephine Teresa, Henrietta Maria Catalina Alexandra, Melina Georgina Patricia Lolita, Armada Ramada Parana Gonorrhea, Margarita Senorita Ballerina, Bacteria Cafeteria, etc., etc., Sanctuary for the Wounded. Sanctuary? Finally, the wounded have a protected habitat to call their own. We tend to the gravely injured. We do not breed them. Who is this Mary Josephine whatever person you mentioned? She has the kindest eyes and warmest heart. Even her kidneys are radiant. She has dedicated her life to helping those in need and providing a positive societal influence. Let me through. I have business with your leader. Visitors are not permitted inside the sanctuary. But I am Deathspank, hero to the downtrodden. Only those gravely injured and near death may enter. Why don't you step aside and let me in? Only those gravely injured and near death may enter. I should get going. Peace be with you. Halt! The sanctuary is off-limits to anyone who isn't near death. Halt! The sanctuary is off-limits to anyone who isn't near death.
by the gracious gravy of heaven, you're wounded. Quick, you must come inside so that we may tend to you. I don't ever want to have to tell you two again. You are not to walk on the grass with bare feet. With all due respect, Reverend Mother, I... For the love of all that is holy, what part of it disrupts the pH balance, don't you understand? But, uh, we apologize, oh compassionate one. It won't happen again. See that it doesn't, because next time there will be eternal pain and torment involved. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have yoga exercises to attend to. I don't know, Brother Darren. I'm still not entirely comfortable with the idea. Oh, don't be such a coward, Brother Dennis. The greater shame would be to waste such a lovely day sweltering in these robes. Greetings, holy men. Trouble in paradise, I see. Ah, I was merely suggesting to Brother Dennis here that we go for a short, unrobed swim in the lake, considering that it is indeed a very hot day at all. And I was suggesting to Brother Darren that such a notion would be entirely inappropriate. We, men of the cloth, are obligated to conduct ourselves with modesty and dignity. But it's not like anyone's going to see us. The gods and goddesses can always see us, and believe me, we've nothing worth seeing. Why don't you just go swimming in your robes? Absolutely not. Everyone will know what we've been up to if we stroll in here all soaking wet. They do take forever to dry, you see. A skinny dip in the lake does sound like fun. See, Brother Dennis? It's not just me. What is this world coming to? Have you no shame at all? There's no need to be so uptight about nudity. Well, you know, the gods and goddesses made you that way. So what's the big deal? Exactly my point. We're recommuning with nature. That is a valid point. But I still do feel a strong sense of discomfort with the idea. Is swimming really less comfortable than just standing here? What do you mean? Think of it this way. Would you rather feel the cool, pleasant embrace of water all around you? Or would you rather stand out here in the scorching sun in those heavy robes? Well... You are starting to smell somewhat offensive. Fine. I'll go, I'll go. Last one in is a logical thinker. I took the road less traveled, and so did all of my friends. Make chaste and holy love, not war. Peace be upon you, brother. Peace be upon you, brother. I am one with the universe. Greetings, monk. I need to see that Mother Maria etc. lady. What do I need to do to get an appointment with her? Well, just give me a minute and I'll check for you.
Greetings again, male nurse. Behold, all the healing you could ever need. I don't think you understand the scale of the problem, but thanks, hero. Greetings again, male nurse. Can you heal me now? Well, since the lawsuit, I'm not allowed to administer any healing directly. But I can give you something to administer to yourself. Here you go. Can you heal me again? 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 This is my last one. Can you heal me one more time? I'm sorry, Deathspank, but you've used up all my healing potions. Goodbye! Greetings, Monk. So, what did Mother Mary Teresa blah 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 say? I'm sorry, but she is booked solid for the next five years. Great! I really need to see Mother What's-Her-Face. It's urgent. <sighs> Fine, I'll check again.
Hello there, Deathspank. Whoa! <laughs> Greetings, talking object. Do you have a problem with me having human-like qualities? Not at all. It's actually quite quaint. Oh, in that case, if you throw a wishing coin into me, I'll reward you with something special. Wishing coins, you say? I'll keep an eye out. Greetings, Ms. Talking Well. Sorry, but I seem to be all out of wishing coins at the moment. Come on, I'm hungry. Greetings, oddly familiar demon witch. What do you want? I have a delivery for you from Farmer Blizzbane. Ah, excellent. Then you may speak. Farmer Blizzbane needs a magical war to deal with some undead commanders on his land. Well, he certainly was wise to send such mm, lovely thigh bones as a gift. <laughs> I will help, but I require some special ingredients to create the ward. Never fear, witch. I'll fetch your ingredients. Very well. I need the goo from Red Aliens. Then I need several barrel -ope droppings. And finally, I need the remains from inside the tomb of the unknown Ghoul Slayer. To enter his tomb, you'll need to be carrying this sigil. Trust me, you wouldn't want to try opening that tomb without it. Now go, find me these things. Greetings, oddly familiar, Demon Witch. Do you have all of the ingredients yet? Not yet, but I'm certain I will soon. <laughs> Greetings, odd little foreigner. Greetings, Deathsmack, intergalactic hero. Why, it's friendly green alien. I almost didn't recognize you without your parasites. Are you having engine trouble again? Correct, your assessment is that spank. Responsible evil red aliens are for our current immobilized status. Parts they took from our interstellar travel device without proper authorization. Red aliens hate green aliens, they do. Curse those alien racists! No one steals from Deathbank's little green alien buddies. Wait here, friend. It's time for space justice. Greetings again, friendly green alien. Our parts did you regain possession of for our interstellar traveling device? I'm working on it, little green buddy. Remain stationary, we will, and await inevitable victory, Deathspank.
Greetings, oddly familiar demon witch. Here is the red alien goo. Good. Return to me when you have the other ingredients. Greetings again, friendly green alien. Here are your spaceship parts. Hope the mighty Death Spank has again. Hey, anything for an old friend. Greetings again, friendly green alien. Space gratitude we bestow once more for your assistance, Death Spank. No need to thank me. It's my job. Greetings, Dr. Eisenbein. Your daughter Lucy sent me to find you. 
You know my daughter? Thank heaven she's still alive. If my daughter trusts you, so can I. I built these robots, but now they've turned against me. Inevitable, I guess. You see, I used evil wiring. It's much cheaper than good wiring, you see. <laughs> Anyhow, they trapped me in this cage and only a punch card will unlock the door. Leave it to me. I'll punch the cards permanently. Just bring me the punch card, knucklehead. Greetings, Dr. Eisenbein. So, have you found the punch card yet? Not yet, but there's plenty of time left for heroism in this day. Greetings, Dr. Eisenbein. I present to you one punch card. My thanks to you, hero. Listen, the Tricor 7 controls all these robots and must be destroyed. Here are the blueprints for the Tricor 7. My daughter Lucy needs to see them immediately. I deliver them myself, but I need to reformat this punch card to open the door first. Consider the plans already delivered, except that I haven't done it yet.
Greetings, Lucy Eisenbein. I found your father. He wanted me to deliver these plans to you. Thank you so much. Hmm. Looking over the plans... Aha! I think I understand the Tricor 7's weakness. But I'll need a scan of a Mark 7 robot to program the control crystal. A scan? That's all? That's a piece of adventuring cake. Here is the scanner you'll have to use. You must go west to Vorten's factory to find the Mark 7 robot and then scan it. Then collect the printout and return it to me. 